Hello, my name is Josh, and I'm Watchaholic. Welcome to Horology Insanity. What is up, my watch friends? So, check this out. Today, we are looking at a watch by Mitch Mason, and specifically, it's the Chronicle. Now, the reason that I'm wearing it and that I wanted to start off with a wrist shot was because, I'm not going to lie, I thought this watch was going to be too small. And for some, it might be. And some might look at my, my wrist and be like, oh, that's a little small, right? Um, you'll notice, right, sometimes I wear two watches on both wrists. Over here, I've got on my Hamilton hand wind. I don't even know what this model is. I don't remember what it's called. But it's amazing. So that's kind of what I've been comparing it to it with some of my other ones. Just to see, okay, how do, how do the different watches wear on wrist? And for this one, I ain't gonna lie. This thing's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed. So let me take it off my wrist real quick. And then we can kind of talk about it. One sec. There we go. So now... This watch is pretty cool because Mitch Mason is a micro brand, and I believe that this is their first watch. They launched it on Kickstarter a little while back, and so for those interested in it, the Kickstarter campaign, I'm fairly certain, is already done and gone. It was way successful. I think they earned about, I don't know, 164000 or some odd um, Singapore dollars, 236 backers, and so they definitely are going to put these into production the estimates on shipping it says that the the like the website says that they're going to be shipping around february 2021 so whenever you're watching this you can compare it to that but february 2021 is when they're estimated to ship out um if the delays from 2020 continue or roll into 2021 well then that might get pushed back a little bit but i think we'll see them early next year now, what's really cool about this is that I think this design is probably the best design of any micro brand watch in 2020. Now, that's a big claim, and it's totally my personal opinion, right? So anybody else, you can have an opinion on this, but let me explain why I believe that to be true, okay? There's a couple of reasons. One, let's start off with this case. Now, for many of you, you, you might know that I love Grand Seiko, and I think this case kind of mimics or homages maybe um, some of the old 44GS, some of the old Grand Seiko, King Seiko kind of styling. And I love it. My Grand Seiko, I only have one in my collection right now, but it has the 44GS case. It's the SBGA 387, um, it's also referred to as the Glacier. But it is absolutely brilliant. And the just the contour, the shaping of the watch, the way that they polish and bevel, you know, it reminds me a lot of Grand Seiko. And I think that's a great thing. I, I love Grand Seiko watches. And so that's probably the first thing that kind of sent me towards thinking, oh, okay, this might be one of the better watches out there this year. Now, at least from a design perspective. Now, let's look at this dial. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. This is the gray or field gray variant. And what we have to think about here is that everything is just kind of painted on but it's painted on in such a way that it almost gives it like a raised texture to it and I think that's cool I think that that's kind of classic which is what you know they were when they did this design they were really trying to make it a classic almost historic watch and I think that they've done that right? Um, but I think they've done it in a way that brings it up to kind of today's standards. And the loom, we'll check that out here in a minute. The pop of blue on that um, seconds hand, you know, I love that. But just the way that this is painted on, it gives it a little depth. It gives it more depth than I otherwise would think that a painted dial would. So that's just, uh, that's something that stood out to me. Now, the last thing that stood out to me was the handset. 
and I absolutely love the handset. Now, they kind of remind me a little bit of like the Seiko Alpinist or some of those other cathedral style hands. They look a little bit, again, kind of like some of the, the Grand Seiko, not the Dolphin hands, but you know, some of the ones that they use on their divers and other things. It, it reminds me of that. And I really, really like it. I love the pronounced hour hand and kind of how thick it is with the design and inlay in that. And then with kind of a simple, almost sword um, coming out to a fine tip on the end of, of both hands, but on the, the minute hand here. And I love that for accuracy's sake. So the more that I get into watches, um, the more I appreciate that. For example, when I first saw the Zen 104 and the syringe hands, I did not care for it. And after getting a couple and wearing them, I've started to appreciate, or I guess I should say my OCD has started to appreciate the fact that I can set that joker to the second and trust it because there's no question about where that hand is pointing to. So let's take a look right down here. Look at that minute hand you can see exactly where it's going. And if you line it up on one of the tracks or on one of the main indices, then you're definitely gonna appreciate the accuracy. If if you're an accuracy guy, I know some folks don't care about that. They they don't mind the big broad hands. You know, I've got some some Zelos, like the Swordfish, for example, that's got some massive hands on it. It's it's really tough to make that thing super accurate. I kinda almost have to get my magnifying glass out to uh, align it. And then again, that's if I want to be picky that day. Otherwise, you know what I would do if I want to be picky that day, or I should say if my OCD wants to be picky that day, well, then I can go and get the Zen out of the box. And if I don't want to be picky that day, well, then I might wear the Swordfish. But this one, this Mitch Mason, no problem with accuracy, I don't think. We'll flip it over real quick to the case back because they did, in my opinion, a beautifully decorated case back. It's kind of got like a coat of arms, you know, with the shield and a decorative inlay in here. I will say when you rub your hand over it, it is smooth to the touch. So a lot of times when they when they get something this ornate and this difficult, they'll use like a laser etch. And that laser etch often results in, in a much finer and cleaner cut, but that is also sharp to the touch. And so, as many people know, right, the, I always use the Zelos, what is it, the Mako V3, some of the Swordfish had it, um, sharp case backs, right, and, and that's no fun. But in this case, uh, whatever Mitch Mason did, they were able to both get the accuracy and the clean, crisp design. And it, look, it's got kind of a sunburst pattern to it as well. That's pretty cool. Now I'm looking at it under my light. I don't know how they did that. That's pretty neat. But um, yeah, they've got the crisp, clean cuts in this. And uh, it doesn't, I don't notice it when I rub my hand over it. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, so here you can see sapphire crystal stainless steel, 200 meter water resist, um, screw down case back. Does have screw down crown. You'll see that here. And I've got some notes I'm gonna share in front of the screen in a second about updates. This is a prototype model. So um, as always, y'all know, right? Like I don't get paid to do all of this. I didn't get a free watch. Um, Mitch Mason didn't ask me to do anything. Um, basically, I was able to borrow this watch because it's a tour watch. It's being shared around to a bunch of different people. And, uh, and so I was able to experience that. I've got to send it off um, actually this afternoon to the next person who is going to get it. Um, and, you know, I'm not getting a free one of these. Uh, I probably will order one. So I like this watch so much that I'm probably going to order one. And I've got some news. Let's do it right now. I don't know if this, if I'm the first person to be able to say this right on YouTube, but I found out that coming soon, meaning next year, Mitch Mason will be putting out a 40 millimeter diver with the similar design language to this Chronicle. And I think that is fantastic. So as much as um, I can wear this, even though it is on the smaller side and we can go over the specs here in a second, but even though I can wear this, I really, I wish they would have made like a 41 millimeter version of this watch and I'd have been all over it, all over it. 
but this one is what they claim 36.5 so let's do the my normal not a review status i'll at least give you some measurements right 36.5 on the button yeah they don't mess around okay lug the lug let's see what they claim a 43.5 and unless i'm getting it yeah no 43 point okay these might be the most accurate specs that i've ever seen on a watch now they claim 12 mil thick plus 1.5 for the crystal so 13.5 thick and they actually are at you know well depending on where i grab it 13.2 yeah so that's pretty sweet and and that those dimensions if they could have kept the same depth, you know, about, about 13 mil there on the thickness, um, you know, the, the lug to lug could have gone up a little bit, you know, maybe to like a 46 or something and then made the case width around a 40, 41. Oh, that would have been my sweet spot, but you all know, I got a big wrist, right? I, I've got an eight inch wrist. And so, um, for me, that's my sweet spot now, for a lot of guys though. I think this is gonna wear in it well for you, even if you have a smaller wrist. And I think the reason is, is because of the way that this case is shaped and designed, it actually sits a lot bigger or better on wrist than you would think a 36 millimeter watch would. Most people are like 36, I can't touch that. But um, think about it this way, or the way that I would liken it to, if you're familiar with the way that Rolex is an oyster case, wears a little bit big for what it is and i'm not talking about that crazy maxi case that they had on the on the whatever the last generation sub which was horrendous in my opinion i never touched that thing um so i had a five digit one and and i thought the lugs were great on that i do think the new ones with uh are going to be the better one they're paring them down a little bit but you know aside from that tangent this case um, it wears a little bit bigger than you would think of 36. And it's really just because of the way that they brought these lugs out and they've kind of given it some shape here on the corners so that it'll wear better. So that's just me. Let, let's look at my other specs. Oh, color wise. So this is the field gray. I mentioned that it's, they have a steel blue. I think that one's got an orange second hand. They have a jet black, which looks pretty good. And then a desert sand, which is it like a cream or an off white looking color. Now I do wonder about the legibility on that desert sand one because the dial looks very similar to the color of the loom on the dial in the indices. So I'm curious what the legibility will that one look like. However, aside from that one, the other three, I think they look great and I think they're really legible. I can glance down at this in no time at all, see it, especially the way that the hands are designed um, and it's no problem whatsoever. Now let's do a quick loom shot because I do want to say it's got I don't even know what kind of loom it has on it. I should probably know that. I'll hold it up in the specs in a second, but let's check out the loom shot real quick. There we go. So you can see they've got a little unique pattern here and, and it's daylight out. Of course, I have the shades drawn, right? So, um, you know, it'll probably look better at dark. Um, I will say that it looks as good in person as it does on the camera. And so that's nice. Sometimes the camera picks up the loom a little bit better than, um, than it, than it actually shows in person, but that's not the case here. And you can see that's pretty neat, right? They didn't loom the, the 12 o'clock or any of the Arabics on there. Um, they gave it a nice wide track at the 12, three, six and nine, and then your minute tracks. Um, you know, there's no pip on the second hand, so you won't be able to track that. Um, I do appreciate watches that have that. Um, but in this case, right, if you just need to be able to tell the time because of the way the hands are designed, you can really see the hour and minute. No problem. I mean, that is immediately legible as soon as you look at it. So I can appreciate that. I kind of appreciate the loom tracks. I like that three, six, nine. I like how they did the elongated one there. Here we go with the lights. Okay. So 
So yeah, no, I'm, here's the funny thing. I'm hard pressed to find anything negative to say about this watch. The strap is absolutely fantastic. Now, I don't know if that's because it's been broken in by some of the folks that have had it before me, but the, the, the kind of suede leather, it's super soft. It's pliable. It immediately wraps around your wrist. It does have quick adjust spring bars. Um, I love here the, the oversized single keeper. So my wrists are so big that I usually take the second keeper off the watch because it doesn't even work. You know, I'm down here on the last, second to last notch or whatever. But in this one, I could put it through, slide it in that one keeper, and it held great. So um, maybe more watch companies start doing something like this. I would appreciate that. You can see here they do have the Mitch Mason signed buckle. And the buckle, okay, so I have been talking about a long time now where I'm kind of picky about my buckles. Zelos has some, some awesome buckles, but they're, they're designed in a way that they're really wide. And, and this is kind of what I hope Zelo might trend towards, to where you still have a design and, and it's not just your standard, you know, slap side buckle. So let's just take a second here. So here's kind of a standard buckle, right? And, and I like the way that these wear. Okay, but you see there's no design element to right. That's just a standard one. Now, oh, I don't know a Zelos one with me that I can show you. I've got watches all over the place, but here's like your standard Casio, right? So you see how that's a little bit wider flare, but it's really flat. And so that's an interesting one. But but what I'm hoping for is something like this. It's got a little design, it's got a little flare. You can see the difference in brushing pattern the mitch mason edge it flares out just a hair right here but not so much that like you don't you don't feel it the zelos ones i think i can feel it left to right right and they're just too big and so you know hey i need to knock my favorite brand zelos um but yeah take take note of this maybe because this Miss mason one is fantastic so with that all right let's wrap this up there's a bunch of specs there's a bunch of stuff. Um, let's see here. Let's talk price real quick. They were on Kickstarter for between $379 and $399, depending on which package you were able to get and how early you backed them. They're on the website right now for $449, so $450. So I think that's a fair price for this watch. And, they, and it's mainly because the design is so good. So if you're not attracted to this design, you can probably find similar specs in a watch for this price or even less than this price in other micro brands. Um, that's just the truth of the matter. Now, I love this design. And so since I didn't do the Kickstarter, paying 50 bucks extra for the design, I'm probably willing to do that. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to, I'll probably be the first one in line to buy that 40 millimeter diver that looks like this. So um, I can't wait for that to come out. But um, that's what we're looking at. So price-wise, again, ships out around February. Real quick, the box. It's got a standard box, Mitch Mason box. You open this box up and you get this leather watch roll. It'll come in there. You can see it's kind of branded Mitch Mason up here in the corner, if you can see that. It's actually a really, really thick and durable leather watch roll. So I think that you could use this for a while and just with whatever traveling or watches you want to do. You'll notice here it's got like a zip pouch. I don't know if that's in case you want to put some extra straps or something in there. Because you can usually throw straps just in one of these pockets. But it's almost like a chain's purse, if you know what I mean. So I don't know what you put in there. Maybe spring bars, little packets. Um, but yeah, you've got three pockets here. So that works well. I'd probably put a little uh, cleaner conditioner on that. Soften it up a little bit. But... Um, let's see, last ones I'll show you. I don't know if I'm allowed to show these on camera. There's nothing that says I can't. So let's look real quick. These are the nice little cards they sent along. And if you want to, you can pause the video to read these. But this just has all the specs of the watch so that you can be familiar. I'm trying to get so there's no glare on there. And you'll have to excuse my old man shaky hands. So there's that. And then the other one is kind of explaining the differences between this spec model or this prototype model and what the production models are going to have.
And so you'll see like this one uses the Salita. It does have the phantom date function. I don't know if the Miyota 9039 has the phantom date or not um, because there's no date complication on this watch. So hopefully it'll just be a single pop to change the time on that Miyota 9039. If somebody knows that in the comments, that would be great. Um, I, I, I didn't research that ahead of time. But with that, I, I do like the crown. So reduce the number of ridges and increased engraving depth for an improved grip. The crown is actually really, really nice. It's one of the, the whole case and design of this. I, I really can't speak highly enough about it. But the finishing, you see that tolerance is secondhand. It'd be shortened to touch the outer rim of the seconds track exactly. And then uh, updating the AR. So if you saw that gleaming in the studio lights, right? That'll be a little bit better when it comes to the production model so but overall yeah i'm a big fan I'm, I'm such a fan of it that one i wish maybe one day maybe maybe so mitch mason if you're watching this after you do the 40 millimeter diver if you can make a 40 or 41 millimeter version of this exact watch i would love it so there's that i'd be your first customer in line for that probably going to do that with the uh, 40 millimeter diver because i like this one so much but that's pretty much it. Yeah, I stand by my claim. Best design of a micro brand watch in 2020. But what do you think? Down in the comments, what do you think of this watch? Is it too small for you? Um, who else ordered one? Did anybody back the Kickstarter? Are you looking forward to it? And if so, which dial did you go with and, and why? Um, I'd be curious about that. I'd probably go with this gray one, looking at them all. Um, second to that is probably the Jet Black. But this gray one would be my pick. And so, uh, so yeah, so we'll see how that goes. And if you think there's a better designed watch in 2020 by a micro brand, then put it down in the comments. Let me know what you think. I'd like to compare it, the different design aesthetics, because this one here, yeah, I love everything about it. So cool. Well, thanks y'all. With that, we'll call this one to a wraps. Please remember what really matters. And then that's not watches. Keep the insanity sane, my friend.